All right, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Samra from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and another video in my series on how to make small talk. The topic of today's discussion is always have something to say. And this particularly pertains to the beginning of social interactions because when you start speaking to someone new, believe it or not, there's certain stages that every interaction goes through. Uh, maybe starts with some introductions, uh, the opener, as some people call it, with whatever you first say to speak to them or whatever they say to speak to you. And usually what happens after that initial opener is there's a lull. There's a, there's a lull, there's a space where people go um, and they wait to see who's going to respond first. And what I always recommend is you take responsibility for filling in this lull because this is going to be critical in how the other person forms a first impression of you. Now, sometimes someone's just going to be more talkative and lugubrious and they're just going to have tons to say to speak to you. And that's fine, but you should be prepared to fill in the lull because it's going to paint you as a leader, it's going to show you confidence, it's going to make it easy for people around you to talk to you, and it's going to make them want to talk to you more, particularly if you started the conversation. If you're still uh, in a period of your life where you're going out to bars or clubs and speaking to new people, especially if you're a dude speaking to girls, you have to fill this lull, because otherwise, girls are just going to turn back around and speak to their friends. So you should be prepared to do that. Uh, a lot of people just ask a question and you can see how easily this could be awful, maybe, if it just goes into what do you do and goes down the road of predictable topics. And that could be okay, I guess, sometimes, but half of the time we kind of want to kill ourselves. What I actually suggest um, is to tell an anecdote that's just happened this week. So, and the great thing about this is you can practice you can choose one a week, and whenever you get into conversation, just remember that it doesn't even have to be that interesting. It doesn't have to be useful. It could just be the smallest thing that happened to you when you spoke to someone in the office. office. Remember something funny or interesting. Note it down and have it in your mind to try speaking about that to five or six people. If you're going out, if you're going to be interacting with people, you can sell it to several people. There's so many uses to this. You'll get better at using your voice. You'll get better at telling the anecdote. You'll be able to um, see what kind of anecdotes get, provoke the kind of conversations that you want to have and what kind of anecdotes fail. So um, just at the weekend there, I just tried this out myself. I was uh, out at a club. I, um, in the spoke, uh, and I was speaking to various new people as I like to do. I always like to practice my social skills and improve whenever I get the opportunity. So I just would say, oh yeah, earlier on this week on Wednesday, we drove up to Inverness, which is about three and a half hours in the north of Scotland from where I live here in Glasgow. I didn't say the three and a half hours, but that's more for your guys' information if you don't know where Inverness is. I said, um, and you can stop and say, what, oh, what did you do that for? I just went on to say with like f four other people, four other guys to perform stand-up comedy. And we get this kind of, oh, oh, oh that's interesting. And I said, um, some people would think that's a long way to go since we just had a 10-minute set. And the great thing about telling an anecdote like this is I get the intel from people's reactions. So some girls said, said something like oh that's oh but that's good that shows dedication others were like oh oh yeah that seems like quite a long place to go so more of a challenge I get to feel the vibe that the other person has towards me by their interaction and you can leave spaces to let the other person fill it in now some people will just go oh I've got a friend who does stand-up comedy and such and such and such and such. Other people will ask you more questions. Some people might want to speak about an experience that they have. But the great thing is, once you've volunteered an anecdote, once you've shared something that just happened this week, and you think, what am I going to do? Turn to someone in a club or bar and turn around and just tell them something that happened this week? Well, actually, yeah, you are, 
because nine times out of ten, they'll be completely happy to talk to you. They're out. They want to have a good time. They want interesting things to happen to them. They want to have an experience. So, yeah, if you turn around and talk to them, nine times out of ten, they'll talk back. One, one time out of ten, they might just uh, turn back to their friends or just be polite. Uh, very, very rarely in a public place is someone going to be rude to you um, for just talking to them. Uh, definitely you have to be equipped to do this if you're going to the office party or any official event. You should definitely have one or two things that happened this week. And the great thing is you can go, it, it leads straight into a question. Who know your anecdote will suggest a question. So for example, at the, when that topic ran out of steam, I would just say, how about you? Have you ever performed on stage? And they could say, oh, they were in the school play, or maybe they play music or something like that. Because I've already volunteered information, it makes them feel more comfortable to um, volunteer information themselves, to offer something to the conversation. The conversation isn't likely to go flat when you have led by example by offering something to talk about. So um, this is... The, 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 another thing is, if you did take one of these stories a week, I, I actually could have had another one. I said, could say, oh, I went over to my friend Susie's house recently. She's making her spare room into a treatment room because she does alternative um, massage, medicine and massage and things like that. Uh, and I, I, help her put, I helped her organize the room and uh, put the curtains up. And it's funny how... Um, weird it was at first because I'm not always that handy but I really enjoyed like figuring out how to put up a picture frame with her dad and take the curtains down or whatever it was you know that could lead to other things and uh, lead to other conversations the the idea is just if you fail to prepare you prepare to fail so every week you should be thinking what you should be noting the little interesting things that happens to you so that you have something to say. And if a conversation goes into a lull, you can throw it out there. Afterwards, that conversation will give you some degree of mileage and they'll come to a natural point where you can ask a question. And because you've already set the example of being willing to volunteer something for your life, you're likely to get a much bigger response from the other person than if you just shoot in and say that question whether it's so have you ever performed on stage some people might answer you if you use that as an opener opener i recommend you don't ask a question in the lull i recommend you step up and be the one that has something to say to get the conversation going once that person is talking to you once that person is volunteering more and feeling talkative themselves then ease off the gas listen more ask questions, make short statements on what they say um, of your opinion or, oh, that sounds interesting, tell me more. Or you could, could just say, yeah, I think so-and-so. Make your responses short to prompt them to speak more, to prompt them to invest more in the conversation. But those five minutes, when you first start the conversation, consider it your responsibility to do 60 to 80% of the talking. People will perceive you as very confident. People will perceive you as someone who's comfortable in social situations and comfortable to be around because they don't feel like they have to work hard when they're in your company. So people don't want to work hard. And um, so write your anecdotes on your phone. Okay. I just want to say, if you feel like you want to improve your social skills, you know it. You know, you sometimes go into situations and you feel anxious, you feel anxious making small talk, you don't talk to the people at work, you go to lunch on your own, or you just avoid social situations, um, but you know that you're not doing it because you don't like those situations. Or maybe you don't, or you know you don't like those situations because you're not confident in those situations, but you probably feel like there's something more that you could be getting out of life if you got this stuff down and you got better at connecting with people, you should email me at anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com. And until next time, be yourself, but don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.